the Orton effect. Maybe you haven't heard of what that is, but you've probably seen the photos that have had it applied. The Orton effect creates a dreamy, ethereal type look to a photograph. I'm sure you've seen it all over the place. I use it kind of a lot. It's in a lot of my stuff. Part of me wonders if it's been overdone because I see it so much. The other part of me is like, well, it's been used a lot because it's simply beautiful. So how can you apply the Orton effect to your photos in Lightroom? Well, let's take a look. Okay, here we're looking at a raw photograph. This was taken April 14th. This is a raw file straight from the Canon camera. 1 100th of a second, F 4.5 ISO 100. Now, on a scene like this, I probably should have used somewhere around an F 9. We probably would have been a little bit more crisp in the background. It falls off just a little bit back there. So that's a mistake that I made out shooting. But regardless, that is where we ended up and the final picture still ended up looking really good. So the Orton effect is essentially this. So this is the after, after I've gone through and edited this raw, this is the before, and this is the after. So you can see it just kind of has that soft glow like look to it. So Orton effect pictures can look all sorts of different ways. There's not a simple effect in Lightroom called Orton effect. It's just a series of edits and processing that we do to the photo to achieve a look like this. So I just want to be clear that there's not like an Orton effect button or preset that you apply. I've already done it obviously, but I'm going to start over. I'm going to take that raw and just take you through the whole process again. And let's see if we end up somewhere similar to this or if we end up with a look that's even a little bit different, maybe a little better, maybe a little worse. I'm gonna go into our global effects here. And the first thing that I like to do is scroll all the way down and I'm going to enable lens corrections. And so Lightroom has identified that the lens on the camera was the Canon EF 24 to 70 f2.8 so it has that information and then it can adjust the photo as necessary to kind of correct any lens distortion that might be in the photograph so that's the first step that i do the second thing that i do is i'm going to go into the crop and i'm just going to straighten out that horizon because i think an uneven horizon is like the first sign of an amateur photographer so i'm just going to go in there and i'm just going to straighten that out hit return and so now we've got a corrected photograph that has an even horizon and we're good to go. The next thing that I do, my next step is to go down to white balance. And sometimes you can white balance based on something that should be white in the scene. So you can click this little eyedropper here and find kind of a, a white or, or a similar type color. And so maybe in these waves, we can hover over those waves See, it goes pixel by pixel here. And so we might pick that and see what it does. I think that does a nice job. I think that warms it up nicely. And it already starts to bring out some of that nice warm tones in the photograph. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that like, like that. And then I think the next thing I wanna do is look at the sky. See, the sky is kind of blown out in this case. So I'm gonna go into masking and I'm gonna select masking and I'm going to select sky. This is a really easy selection for Lightroom in this case because the sky is just a straight horizon. But look, if we look, zoom into here, there's people here that we can take care of that later, but there are people. But look, you can see this mask color. Right now I have a green mask color just so I can see it, but you can see that it actually selected part of the water here. So there's a couple ways to get rid of that. So let's look at that real quick. Now, this is a way to get rid of it that sometimes is really efficient and sometimes it's not, but I want just wanna walk you through it. We're gonna subtract. We go into mask and we go into subtract and we subtract sky. Now that seems really unintuitive, like the wrong thing to do, but this oftentimes works. So if we remove the sky and then we go into our removed sky, click these three little dots. So we do three dots and then we invert sky selection. Typically, that'll create a much finer line, and it did a nice job, it helped out a little bit. Helped out a little bit, but we still have this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract, and I'm gonna select a brush. And then I'm gonna change the size of my brush, I'm gonna increase the feather of my brush, and I'm gonna keep the flow right about up here. And then I'm just gonna paint over this and just remove 
some of this green because I don't want my changes to the sky to affect the color of the water. So if we just brush out some of this, it doesn't have to be perfect along the horizon there, but we just go like so. Now we have a much cleaner sky selection. So when you're selecting a sky, that's something to look out for. Um, you can click show overlay. And so, and then you can pick the color of what you want that overlay to be based on what colors you might see or what might look right to you. So sometimes, you know, a straight red can look good. So whatever, whatever you like, but it'll show you what is selected and what isn't. So now that we have that selected, we can see that we have just the sky selected. So that's good. So I'm gonna turn that overlay off and then I'm gonna start experimenting with how that sky should look. Typically what I'll do is pull the highlights down. There we go, just like that. It starts to pull some of those details back. We can pull that down all the way if we want, which looks pretty good. Uh, we can bump up the contrast just a little bit, bring the blacks down just a little bit, just to get a little bit more drama in, in that sky. And then the temperature, this is where it starts to make a bigger difference. This was at sunset and you can see it's kind of, the sky was just a little bit blown out there. And again, if I would have used a lower f-stop, if I would have stopped down to around f9, that sky probably would have more detail. But in this case, we can, we can just increase the temperature just a little bit and that'll bring back some of that sunset color that was there. Might even pull the blacks down a little bit more. And then we can even pull the exposure down just a tiny bit. If we do too much, it looks super bad, like, like super bad. So be careful. But if we just bring that exposure down just a little bit, somewhere around there, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so now that we're in masking and we have our, we might fine tune that sky later because it still looks a little funky. Let's fine tune the rest and then see how the sky looks and then we can make a change if we need to. But. Let's add another mask. What I want to do is create more, more light in this area here so that the eye starts here and kind of just can wander off toward the horizon and explore some of the features out there. So I kind of, I want the eye of the viewer to start on this cliff side with all this cool texture here. The sun was coming in from the right, so off screen to the right. So if we select our masking and we create a new radial gradient, and let's just create that radial gradient from the direction that the sun was coming. So if we create a gradient like this and we just move it down here, then we can even kind of change the direction like this. So, you know, the sun is out this way, shining its light here, and we can select this area and then increase the exposure just a little bit. And that's gonna bring in some of that, that light on the areas that are already being hit by the sun. And then what I'd like to do is pull some of those blacks down just to add a little bit more drama and then move that temperature up since this is sunlight. So then we can just move that temperature up a little tiny bit. Again, don't go crazy with it. You go crazy with it, it looks super bad. So just really, really subtle, something like that. Looks pretty good. Now, another thing that I think would look good is we have these cliffs in the back and that cliff is getting some of that sun that's coming in from the right. So. I'm gonna add another radial gradient and I'm just gonna bring that over this area. I'm gonna rotate it so that it fits. Something like that and it doesn't have to be perfect. This inner circle here, this is our, our feather. So we can pull that all the way up or all the way down. If we bring it all the way down, it's gonna be a perfect circle, which isn't gonna look good. If we bring it all the way up, to 100 or so, it's gonna be a, a much more subtle and refined look. So I'm gonna bring that somewhere, probably right around the middle, somewhere around 50. And then I'm gonna increase the exposure just a little bit so you can see the difference that that's making. And then I'm gonna pull that temperature up to just to kind of enhance that sunlight hitting that really cool cliff in the background. Maybe bring the blacks down, yeah. Yeah, I think that looks good. And that's a super subtle change. And if we go up to our masking and we have this little eyeball here, we can click the eyeball and just kind of get a sense of what change that is made. But it's pretty subtle, but I think it looks, looks really good. So I might even do a little bit more down in this area. So if we do another one, another radial gradient and pull that one in kind of like, so it's gonna be too big, but we'll move it. I'll make that just a little bit smaller place it somewhere around there. 
increase the exposure. Let's see what that does. I'm gonna take some blacks, put a little bit more black into that, and then warm it up just a tiny, tiny little bit. So now we've made quite a difference already. If we, we come up here to masks and we have our eyeball up here, and that'll turn off all masking and you can kind of see. So that's where we are now. And then if we turn them all off, that's where we started. And that's where we are. So already we've made some really, really good progress on this and it's looking, looking really nice. Now the next thing that I like to do to really bring out that effect is I'm gonna create a new mask and it's gonna be a brush. Now check this out, pay attention to this one because this is a subtle change, but it really makes a difference. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select the brush. I'm gonna make the brush big and I'm gonna make the feather small and then make sure that the flow is 191, whatever. And so we have our big mask here, and then just click and just apply. So apply that brush to the whole image. So now we basically just put a mask over that entire image. Down here in our settings for that mask, we have exposure, contrast, highlights, etc. cetera. Um, these are some numbers I like to start with, and you can write these down if you want and follow along or experiment and see what, what works for you. Exposure, I'll bring up just a tiny, tiny bit, like 0.15, and then push return. And then contrast, if we go up to 20, push return. Highlights, minus 25, so we pull those highlights down. And then scroll on down to the effects section, and we have our texture. So texture, we're gonna go plus 10. Clarity, we're gonna bring down to minus 25. And then dehaze, we're gonna go minus 10. So clarity and dehaze are pretty vital in creating the, the quote, Horton effect. And you can see what that does already. It just adds more glow to that photograph. And uh, again, we can turn off that entire mask and then turn on that mask. Really, really subtle but that's where we want to be. Now there's a next step here. Go into these little three dots, click those little three dots, and then intersect with mask using luminance range. So what we've done with that mask is brightened up the entire image. But with this Orton effect, we really wanna only brighten up the highlights and leave the darks alone. So to do that, we have this luminance range slider here and if we start to adjust this, we can click this little box that says show luminance map. So you can see right now it has everything selected, but watch what happens as we move this slider, the slider on the left, as we move that toward the right, it's gonna deselect the blacks in the image. And there's no predetermined number of where that needs to be. But as we do that, you can see how much, you know, how much of an effect that makes. Um, so that's a good visualization. If we want to turn off that, then we can do that without, without that overlay and kind of get a sense. It's subtle, but you can see how the blacks are, are being affected there. So I'm going to pull that down, I think right about there, and then we can do our little eyeball again. Turn off the whole effect, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go back into our global edits. And see, I haven't even touched the light effects here. I haven't even touched those. I've done all of this through masking so far. So as we go down here, we're gonna go into color grading, and then we're gonna, we're gonna play with the midtones and highlights. I might leave the shadows alone. But if we take the midtones, bring the midtones down just a little bit, it's kind of give, give that little, little bit of a glow where we can move it up and it'll just brighten up the image. So again, personal preference. I might pull those down a little bit and then increase the highlights a little bit. And now we have our effects, our texture, clarity, and dehaze. So I might bring that clarity down on our global edits, down to about there. Dehaze, sometimes it makes sense to decrease dehaze, so go into the negative. Sometimes it makes sense to bring it into the positive. But again, be really gentle with this, because if you pull it all the way up, I mean, you see pictures posted that look like this and not my cup of tea, maybe it's yours and that's okay, but I'm gonna be really, really gentle and so with that. So I might go somewhere around there. And then I like to add some vignetting too, so I can pull that vignette down to sometimes minus 10, sometimes minus 20, 
But now we have that really cool kind of pool of light up here on this cliff side and down through the texture, which looks pretty darn good to me. I'm liking that. Some of the finishing touches that we can do, we can go up into our light and see if we want to pull the exposure up or down. Pulling it down just a tiny little bit just adds some, adds some more drama to the whole scene. And I might, I might do that. I think that looks pretty cool. Now, another thing to check, we have our histogram up here. And look, if we look to the left, we have this big spike. Um, that's showing us that we have some areas of dark that might be too dark, uh, blowing out the darks. So if we click this little arrow, it's gonna show us some blue. And that blue marks where our blacks might be too black. I mean, those are spots that are supposed to be black, so it's not that big of a deal. We can increase our blacks here and kind of pull those out just a little bit. And that's probably a good thing to do. And you can see how the histogram changes. It moves that histogram. We had that big spike here and now we don't. So um, that is good. Okay, so I'm happy with how this is looking in Lightroom. However, we have this. Look at this, we've got people. We've got people all over the place. And I don't want the people in there. So I'm gonna do that next part in Photoshop. I'm going to right click on this photo and I'm going to edit it in Photoshop. Okay, once we have it in Photoshop, the first thing I do is just click this little padlock here just so we have full control. I don't know if that's necessary for what we're going to do in Photoshop now, but it's the first thing that I do. And so now I'm going to grab my magnifying glass and I'm just going to zoom in on the areas where I want to remove some of these people. And to remove them, I'm going to use Photoshop's remove tool. So I'm gonna click this little tool in the sidebar and depending on, it, it'll default to the size you had last. You can change the size up here or you can use your open and close brackets to change the size of that. Um, but if we just click and kind of paint over the items or people that we want gone, Photoshop's gonna decide how that should look. Look at that, pretty cool. And so then we're going to remove their little speakers or whatever it is they brought with them. And paint those away. I love, love, love this feature so much. And any of the people who are in our scene who we don't want, we're just going to paint over them and they're going to go away. So then we're just going to hunt. Here's another person. Make that person go away. Another mountain goat of a person here. Make that person go away. This person's gonna go away. And this person's gonna go away. And we could get rid of these people up here. I'm not so worried about that because they're so darn small. It's not really that big of a deal. They're not really gonna be seen in the final image. Well, there's a photographer. Get rid of him. Get rid of the competition. <laughs> All right. So then if we go back to our magnifying glass, we're gonna hold down option and then click to zoom back out again. And that's pretty good. Those people are gone. We have this sign here. I see that sign, so maybe I don't want that there. So let's go back in and grab our tool. We might as well get rid of that people and that sign. And I guess while we're at it, get rid of those folks. Zoom back out, hold Option key, zoom out. And we've got a pretty clean photograph here. So once we're happy, I'm just gonna hit X to close out of here. I'm gonna click Save. I'm gonna do no compression, save it as a Macintosh file. Hit OK. Uh, we don't really have any other layers, so I'm not going to worry about that. We could flatten that anyway, but I'm not going to. It doesn't matter. Hit OK. So then that's going to close Photoshop, and then it's going to open it back up in Lightroom. And then we basically have a finished file. Sometimes you can hit Auto on that saved one, and it'll just... I like it. I like it. I'm cool with that. I think that looks great. So if we compare that to the first edit that I made... Yeah. See, I, I warmed up this one. This, so this one is much warmer. I might prefer that. And so that's just a, a really good visualization of how one photo, the same raw photo can be processed in a different way. 
I mean, this is, this is cool. It might be just a little bit on the cool side. So this one is obviously a bit warmer. And now, if this is not a raw file anymore, now it's a TIFF file, because once it's edited in Photoshop, it saves it as a TIFF instead of a raw. But we could go in and bring that temperature down if we wanted to. You know, I kind of like it where it is. I kind of like it where it is. I think it looks good. So what do you think? Have you done this to your pictures? What do you think of this effect? Would you use this on your photos? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials like this. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've learned something and I hope you'll check out one of these videos next.